This is your weather forecast for the week beginning Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth, once again recording from a remote location as I'm getting ready for spring break. And yes, I'm going to try to get into a car and drive out of the state before this place becomes buried. But be first, we've got the, oh, sorry, new moon. I, I'm not going to go back and fix that. Saturday, March 13th. Looking quickly at our drought conditions from last week to this week, definitely some relief in the Front Range area and Boulder County and down towards western Denver. We're about to get a lot more water though. This is going to be great news, at least for the northern half of the state um, going forward. Looking nationally, you can see the lessening of drought a little bit in the mountains, especially Colorado, and a little bit of the northern Rockies. Not much, but it's all an improvement. Things are not getting worse. So the precipitation we got over the last seven days, half a inch amounts, a few local one inch amounts, but light stuff overall. Well, the big story is that low, sitting off of northern California coast, trough down south of it, and a general deepening trough over the entire western U.S. You can see there's a mini ridge over Utah, Arizona, but it's just sort of a response of troughs on both sides. The little sprinkles and showers that we received on Wednesday and Tuesday is that little ripple going through Kansas and Nebraska. Giant ridge on the east coast is giving them near record heat and even fire conditions. You can see this same pattern in the water vapor satellite image. The reds, as I always explain, are very dry air through the entire atmospheric column, where grays and whites are moist air, and the pinks and the blues are usually high clouds or extremely cold air like we saw with the polar vortex. But there's the low. We don't have one of those right now at all. But there's the uh, big low that's cutting off on the west coast, funneling moisture around and into the western states. The storm begins really Friday morning as the low now rolls down into uh, the Las Vegas area and showers begin to uh, pick up all around it. Oops, I missed one. On Saturday evening, the storm is at its maximum. You can see the upper level pattern. This is the 500 millibar uh, heights and they are very depressed like a bowl right here in the atmosphere inside of this big ridge so that's why it's cut off it's not going very quickly with the jet stream flow and it is in a really good location just to pump moisture up around you can see there's a vorticity maximum that's this red coloration that says the atmosphere wants to rotate in the direction that allows air to rise, which that with upslope means maximum snow rates pretty much. And that's what we are expecting. Here's the surface precipitation future map at that same time for Saturday evening. And you can see the yellows here, are really strong convection. You get the thunderstorms there. And right here on the edge, there's Longmont and the front range and I-25, the darkest blues, and there's even thunderstorm uh, coloration there. So this is just going to go crazy. And one of the expressions that we have in, in the weather community is that if you really want the heaviest snow, you've got to smell rain. It's got to be warm enough close by that uh, you can get that much moisture st still in the atmosphere. Remember when we had temperatures down at 10 below and, and like that, we didn't get a lot of snow. The um, Those temperatures don't support the water vapor that you need. All right, the en ensemble is one that we've never seen the likes of in this show. Um, again, the ensemble here runs a, the GFS model multiple times with variations and stacks them up uh, vertically. So you have runs 1 through 30 here. And the blues and light blues are snow and heavy snow. And if they all have precipitation falling, 
in all different all 30 different runs you have a high confidence that that's happening and pretty much that's what's picking up thursday into friday and then quite abruptly friday night things just go crazy for a few days all the way to monday morning in fact there's a winter storm watch that i'm sure will be upgraded to a warning in the next day or so uh, for much of the front range and i-25 uh, communities in denver and north and south so oh. I'm just going to let these mistakes go because I've got to get this out onto the air as quickly as I can. The normal high temperature goes from 53 to 56 over the next 10 days. Lows from 25 to 29. We're definitely heading towards spring. You can see the temperatures bounce around in normal until Saturday and then beyond. We stay down uh, hovering around the normal low temperature for this time of year. All right, let's put this in motion and watch this big thing roll. Now, since it's not being driven uh, directly by the jet stream, it does tend to wobble around and take its time, but there it is going right over southeastern uh, Colorado before it go ejects into Kansas and Nebraska. Then by Monday, Tuesday, another one is coming down in its path a little further south than this model run, but that's what keeps the unsettled weather going all the way into Tuesday next week taking a look at temperatures for fun you can see the cold front pushing right through here and cool air coming in there's the cool air associated with the cutoff low it's not super cold there isn't a lot of cold cold air in fact temperatures will probably rise just above freezing almost every day um, but it uh, that's what you need for the heaviest snow the snow as it falls some of it will evaporate and that will cool the air locally they're looking at the surface. This is the uh, in motion maps. It will include the one frame that we had earlier. Here it comes it low out of the southwest, and there it is over southeast Colorado. And for a good day and a half, just pumping maximum amounts of precipitation up into the next week. Here comes that next low, and snow spreads up across the eastern plains and mountains again. So it's a double hit, basically. So I'm taking the GFS and I'm taking slices uh, moving forward. So for the next two days from Wednesday forward, just getting us into Friday uh, afternoon, we have um, a little bit of snow, not much at, at first. Going one more day forward though, things go crazy. This is 18 to 20 inches, 22 inches of snow just up the hill from Boulder including Fort Collins, especially the western uh, side of Fort Collins, and most of Larimer, Boulder County, and western Denver really hit. When we go six days out, we scoop up the rest of the weekend snow, and then the next hit, and I gotta say, the, these just look unrealistic to me, and maybe this will come together 60 inches of snow from Boulder to Red Feather Lakes and up, uh, right around Longmont, we're in the definitely above two feet. We're in the 30 to 40 inch area. That's not what other models are calling for. It, this is really going crazy. Um, I'll take a look at some of those. So here's the Canadian model, and it definitely has a bullseye here around Longmont and up to Fort Collins, up to Red Feather Lakes. You're in the 20 to 25, 27 inch snow area which does uh, show up in a lot of the other model runs. Look at these amounts up here in Nebraska and Wyoming, got 40 inches up here. So this model could be going a little crazy up in that area. The North American model only goes out three and a half days, and at the time I'm recording, this is the most recent I could grab. And so that gets you just into the um, all the weekend some and it's got five to seven inches around here right up the hill from boulder you're definitely in the one foot to locally 18 inches or so 16 inches heavier stuff out here so that doesn't bring it all in we, we have to wait for another day and a half two days to see what it says kind of grab this one just as the snow is beginning so for the week uh, we start dropping temperatures going down into the 30s, but look, notice it's just it's not going below. We do rise at least briefly above freezing every day of the storm. Nighttime temperatures in the 20s and eventually teens later in the storm. 
for frequent weather updates and I will keep an eye on everything check the Longmont Leader and you also get local news and stories about what the storm is doing to Longmont and the vicinity this has been your weather forecast for the week beginning March 10th I'm Chief Meteorologist John Ensworth keep looking up and get a shovel